Okay, let's go ahead and go over this and see how you're doing on it. Um, this is formative assessment 4.3. So this is kind of give you an idea if you understand section 4.3, which is over the addition rule for probability. Kind of the main thing that you learn in this unit is that, this section is that when you see the word or in probability, it means to add the probabilities together. So here's, this is your worksheet. I just projected it up here. Number 1A, explain why being out for girls, high school cross country, and volleyball, girls volleyball, are mutually exclusive events. Jen? Because you can't do cross country and volleyball at the same time. Right, it's, it's not allowed at our school, right? So if we have, let's say that this is our volleyball team, this, this circle represents all the members of our volleyball team, and this is all the members of our cross country team, there's nobody that's in both. There's no overlap. When that happens, we call those two events mutually exclusive, no overlap. Explain why being in band and on the basketball team are not mutually exclusive. Let's say this circles all our band people. Now, do you think the band has anybody that also plays basketball? What do you think? Uh, first hour told me there were a few people. They told me that there were some people that, they told me they thought there was about three. I don't know if that's right or not, but I'm gonna say. They told me there was three in the overlap. So band, yeah, and, and it might not, they might be freshman or sophomore basketball players in the band. But, so there's overlap. When there's overlap, we say that it's not mutually exclusive, okay? Now, here's the key to this, this section, is that when the events are mutually exclusive, and you want to find the probability of two events, A or B, sorry my penmanship with my mouse isn't very good yet, but I'm working on it, A or B, all you do is simply add the two probabilities together. You just take the probability of A got to work on this, don't I? Plus the probability of B, and that's all you do. Okay? So not, not too tricky. When you see the word or, you add the probabilities. Now, if, it, if they're not mutually exclusive, and you're trying to find the probability of A or B, then you have to do something different. You gotta be careful because you don't wanna count those people that are in band and basketball twice. So you're still gonna add, when you see or, again, you're gonna add, you're gonna take the probability of A, running out of room here, plus the probability of B, but if you just do that, you would be counting the people that are in band and, uh, and basketball twice. So then you have to take that answer and subtract the people that are in both which would be the probability of A and B. And again, the reason you're doing that is because those people were getting counted twice. So if you're being counted twice, you have to subtract out that probability once. So you take P of A plus P of B minus the probability of the overlap. Any questions about that? That's the basic thing that we're studying in this lesson. Okay, let's go to um, number two. See if I can get this to work right. Okay. Kind of just learning on this computer a little bit. But. All right, in a town, 10% of people are Hispanic, 60% women, 40% Caucasian, 15% are Caucasian women. The town has no Hispanic women. If one person is randomly chosen from the town, find the following probabilities. The probability of being Hispanic or Caucasian. Now, is that mutually exclusive? Are there any that are both? No, it says right here, no Hispanic women. So this is a mutually exclusive situation. So you just add the probability of Hispanic, which is what? 10%. Right, 10% or 0.1, plus the probability of being Caucasian, which is 0.4, so what's my answer going to be? Right, 50% or 0.50, or we can just say 
Any questions about that one? Okay, probability of being Caucasian or a woman. Now we have some overlap. The probability of being Caucasian, we said, was 40%, so 0.4. Or means plus. What, what's the probability of being a woman? 60%, so 0.6. So, wow, that adds up to 100%, right? Or 0.1, or 1, excuse me, 1.0. But you've got some people that are both. Some people got counted as Caucasian and women. You don't want to count both, count them twice. So you need to subtract off the overlap, which is 15%, right, 0.5. <coughs> and if you do that, if you take 0.4 plus 0.6 is 1, minus 0.15, final answer, 0.85, 85% chance that if you randomly selected somebody, that person would be either Caucasian or a woman. 85 out of 100 times, the person would be either Caucasian or a woman. <coughs> C, Hispanic or a woman? Well, is this visually exclusive? Is there any overlap between Hispanic and women? No. Right there it says no Hispanic women, so no overlap. So again, this is just a simple case of adding probabilities. Add the Hispanic uh, population, which is uh, 0 0.1, plus women, which is 0.6. So what's my answer going to be? 0.7. If there were Hispanic women, we'd have to subtract that off from our answer. Any questions about that? I think we already answered D and E. Um, D is, are, being a woman, being Hispanic, mutually exclusive? The answer would be yes, because there's no Hispanic women. This would be a yes. Whoops. All right, let's try that again. Yes. Okay. For E, are being a woman and being Caucasian mutually exclusive? That would be no, because there are some people that are both. Any questions about number two? Okay, let's move on to three. This is our last one. person's randomly chosen from the student's list in the table, find the following probabilities. I've got, um, these are some of the problems that throw people the most, it seems like, in this chapter, is the problems with the tables. First thing I suggest you do is add up the row. So 100 plus 90 plus 110, that's a total of 300 males. Looks like we're looking at a, at a high school here probably, because we have sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Add up the females, 80 plus 120, that's 200, plus 70, that's 270. So you have a total population here, 570 people. Okay, um, probability of being male or a senior. So all you need to really do here is add together all the males, which are this, these 300 right here, plus who else? So 70 seniors. So how many would that be total? 370, 300 males plus 70 seniors. So you're gonna have 370 divided by your total, which is 570. And then if you reduce, divide them both by 10, the answer to this one would just be 37 out of 57. Any questions about that? That's a, that's a 57 on the bottom there. Okay, that says 37 out of 57 if you can't read that. All right, next one. Probability of being a sophomore or a junior. So I'm going to add up all the sophomores plus the juniors. So I'm going to add up this column, which is 180, right? 100 plus 80 is 180. Plus the juniors, 90 plus 120 is 210. So 180 plus 210, what's that? 180 plus 210, oh. 390, close, yep, 390, you got a total of 390 juniors and seniors. So again, the or means add, don't forget that, because we'll be getting to some other problems where you won't have an or, you'll have an and, and then you do something different. So you got 390 out of a total of 570 again, so if we divide <coughs> by 10, that's 39 out of 57, then divide by 3, that's 13 out of 19. Let me see a show 
of hands, how many people came up with 13 out of 19 for that? Quite a few. Okay, good. Just, just curious. If you did, hopefully you, now you're seeing how to do these. Don't you get it? Okay. Easiest one's the last one. What's the probability of being either a male or a female? One. You go randomly select a student, you know for sure they're going to be a male or a female, so if something's a sure bet, the probability is one. If it's impossible, the probability would be zero. So in this case, it would be one. Now, the one place that some people get off a little bit, let's go back to A here a second. Look at A one more time. The answer is 370 out of 570. Some people, let's do it again down here, will do this. They'll say, okay, males. There's 300 males, so we'll add those together. And then they'll say seniors. Okay, 110 plus 70, that's 180 seniors. So they came up with 180 plus 300, 480 people that are either seniors or males. So then they put an answer down to 480 out of 570. And you see that that's not right, is it? So what, did, what would this person be doing wrong here? Okay. Yeah, they counted the males twice. Don't count the males twice. If you do, then you have to go back up and say, okay, whoops, I counted the males twice. I'm going to subtract off 110 from 480, which would give you 370, which will just give, give you this answer up here again. So just be careful not to count the same people twice. As long as you don't count them twice, these problems aren't too bad. Anyone have any questions?